Okay, the next thing is talking about the waxes and tools that you use for the peaking. Now, this is my wax pot, and it is just a little cheap uh, electric skillet that you can get at pretty much any kind of uh, small dollar store. I think I got this at Dollar General. Keep my waxes in it, which is a mix of paraffin. I get this, you can get this in the grocery store um, over by the sugar and baking stuff like flour because it's used um, for canning. To paraffin and then a mix of beeswax. You can buy batik wax that's already pre-mixed. I just prefer to do my own. And it's around probably... 60% beeswax and 40% paraffin, um, maybe 55%. It's kind of in between there. There's more beeswax, but it's almost equal, but it still gives that good crackle effect. Um, some people use soy wax, and um, I hear that you can like uh, just boil it out, wash it out with really hot water. I don't know. I don't use it. Um, I use traditional waxes. So anyway, um, when you heat this, for me, on this particular thing, I heat it to about right there. But you want to have it below the boiling point of wax it because it can catch on fire. Another thing is keep a box of baking soda or a chemical fire extinguisher because if it does catch on fire, Water is just going to make it spread. Baking soda will pull it out. Um, so keep something like that or a fire extinguisher, which is on the wall. But um, another thing is when you're waxing, you want to have this venting. I don't have the fans on right now so that you can hear me talking. But I have an outside fan that vents out and then another fan that like pulls the smell away. Um, you can use a mask, but they get really, really hot and stuffy if you're just wearing them constantly. The next thing is jaunting tools. Um, that's how it's spelt. That's not how it's pronounced. It's, that's kind of silent. It's jaunting, jaunting tools. Um, I used to mispronounce it a lot, and I might still be saying it wrong, but I've been corrected several times. Um... They're copper, brass, I think that might be aluminum. Um, they have little pots on them and a little bitty stem so that the wax can drop out of it. So it's filled with hot wax and then you literally draw out your design with the wax. Um, something that I like to do is keep a, I, I keep this little glass pot because I can put in some hot water, melt this wax down, and pour the wax back in to my pot. But anyway, let's pretend this is hot. I would dip my wax in there, and I kind of like hold it here until I get to my design so I don't get drips all over the place. So this is more like a drip pot. Um, some of these brass ones uh, can be cheap, but they come a loose. They just... This, ends slide off um, for me after a few months of use but uh, if you're not doing it all the time it'd probably be a year or so if, if it ever did it. I just drill a hole in the metal in the wood and put a screw in it because these little ones have little nails all in them already. Another thing you can use that other artists like to use is uh, brushes for you dip it in the hot wax and it gets hot wax and you draw with it and you paint with it. Um, these are just chip brushes. They're cheap. Um, I use them to cover a finished design. You'll see that later. So that covers the waxes. The most important thing to remember is to not let this get too hot. Um, better to have it set too low and when you're pulling your wax off you notice it's cooling off too fast then it needs to be a little hotter. Um, I use many tools at one time but if you just have a couple that's cool um if this was hot these would all be sitting in a row so let's just say you have one one jaunting tool right one size one 
Um, the different sizes, they go up. This is a size 1, so it has a small tube. A size 2 would have a bigger tube. A size 3, uh, you use them for filling in big areas. Um, the wax's purpose is to act like a resist. So where the wax is, no dye can get to it. You want it to be hot enough to penetrate through your fabric. So if you draw a line and the wax is sitting on top and you flip it over, then you don't see the wax on the other side. Your wax was not hot enough. Slowly adjust it um, until you get to it. They sell little pots that are made specifically for batink um, that serve the same purpose. I think Dharma carries a little saucepan kind of like this, but you can get them, at, you know, like I said, little... Um, little small general stores but uh there's even people that will use small crop pots just set on high you know as long as your wax is hot enough if you just have one tool so your, your tools can't just sit in the wax and stay hot um when your wax gets cold or too cool to flow dump it out and then fill this back up with hot wax let it sit for a few minutes if you just put it back in with the cooling wax, it'll take longer to heat up. So just dump it out and fill it back up with some, some hot wax. So now I am going to move on to turn this on, melting this wax, and adding a little extra wax into the pot if it needs it once it's melted. You want to wait to do that because uh, you don't want it to overflow. So this is about four ounces of wax right here anyway of the, the beeswax and the paraffin um, beeswax you can get at a preferably a local beekeeper if not hobby stores carry it um, you can order it online and like I said if you don't want to make sure on wax some people use just soy wax just beeswax um, and they get some crackle from it this is just what I learned and um Oh, uh, just for reference, I don't remember the name of it, but it was like 20 years back, pre-internet. Um, I learned how to batink from a book at my local library. Yay! So anyway, what we're going to do is go on and heat up this wax, and I'm going to show you how to draw with, with the melted wax.